sitting in Rotterdam for the second time uh, with uh, Neda Point. Yes. Thanks for having me in your uh, nice house. Thank you. Uh, to talk about a very dear subject, uh, uh, your precious project, your CD, and of course, A Course in Miracles. So where do you want to start? Doesn't matter, wherever you feel like starting. Yeah. Well, let's start with the CD because it's, it, it, it just won an award here in Rotterdam. Yes, it did. Just a few days ago, it won the award for best album of the year um, by the Rotterdam Music Awards. So that was pretty exciting. Great. <laughs> yeah. And uh, did you get like a, 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 um, a paper which said why they uh, thought it was such a great album? Um, no, they didn't. They didn't say that. It was it was judged by the by a jury and then to win people had to vote so it was more people that supported you that actually made made the album win um, but no I don't know exactly why. And yeah. What does it bring about when you win such a prize? What, what does it what does it manifest in you? Um, well, for me, it was just really the confirmation that. I don't know, like a confirmation or a validation that it's okay to shine your light. Like for me, it felt like that. And <coughs> I heard from a lot of other people as well that it was like this symbol for it's okay to um, spread love, to spread light and to um, like, it was just like a big green signal of like, yes, we want you to spread your light and yes, we're open for it. And, yeah, it was just like, a, it just felt like a really beautiful symbol for that. Yeah. Were you, before winning the prize, maybe still a little in doubt if, if this is the right path? Or how does that work as an artist? Um, no, not really. Now, not anymore. Because, uh, yeah, since the light has come, since, since those songs came through me, we talked about it in the Dutch um, uh, interview, that I did feel a lot of doubt because all of the songs will... will probably talk more about it but that all of the songs came from A Course in Miracles and that they were like uh, containing um, um, Christian terminology and I was very allergic to that so then there was a lot of doubt and feeling like I would never make these songs into an album um, but once I actually really truly in my heart said yes I want to do this um, and that was uh, as I told you before on the at the Voice of Holland um, where I just really felt like the only thing I want to use my voice for is to communicate love and to support people that are listening to my music. I want them, I, I want my music to support them in their journey of awakening. And I really felt like I didn't want to use my voice for anything less than that goal. So uh, the light has come is like, that's, that's the only goal the light has come has the, the album. So yeah and i see everything that came from it also so so many beautiful things and so many fun things like it's not boring at all it's like it, i don't feel like i'm missing out on anything like i've already been to mexico by an invite and recorded a music video there i've been touring through america i've been performing in uh, st quentin state prison and just so many beautiful things next year i'm going to new york and to boston and so many more adventurous stuff is going on so yeah for me it's all like a full yes now to just follow to just listen and follow follow the inspiration follow the love that i feel inside of me and yeah it feels good now yeah so not afraid that this prize is like an an, an, an ego thing that well i want you i won a prize uh, 10 years ago for my radio work mm. and i know next week i was thinking hmm what's the next prize i'm gonna win or what's, <laughs> right. what's the next big thing which gonna uh, shine on yeah. me right how does that work for you right well for one i really didn't feel like i won the prize ah. for me it really feels like the album yeah the album won the prize and there's so many people that collaborated in making that album uh, become the light has come so it doesn't feel for one it doesn't feel personal for me um, and the only real credit I always take with 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 the album what I tell people as well is it's is just the, the the courage that it took for me to step back and really follow into the unknown mm -hmm. like I never 
it was just all so new for me and and the album also came in a time where i felt like my whole life was just upside down and everything was just scary and to then still have the courage to just step back and follow even even though you have no securities don't even know in the beginning i don't even know like who's gonna listen to this uh, is how am i gonna finance this how is this gonna be like all of that to not know that and then to win the award afterwards it's just like it's just like a funny and beautiful symbol of like we got you don't worry and it's time it's time to shine your light it's time to really do what you came here to do yeah so it's about trust definitely trust is very yeah trust is a very important part of the journey and the yeah. The, the, all those life coaches tell me I have to trust myself. I have to gain self-confidence. Is it about that kind of trust, or w w in w in what or who do you trust? Well, then we come a little bit to the Course in Miracles, because the Course says whenever you feel anxiety, whenever you feel scared, just paraphrasing right now, um, it's because you're trusting upon your own strength, and. So I, I get what the life class, that's of course like the, the common thing, you need to trust in yourself and you need to, you know, be, uh, not be insecure or whatever. Um, but from the course point of view, it's more like we really don't know what the heck we're doing here. And from my own experience, I know that every time I try to do something myself and just only rely on my own self, that's like the, the I call it more... The, the ego self, like the small self, when you rely on the small self, the, the meta, uh, like I know best, I know best. It's actually constantly trying to prove that it can live a life without God. It's constantly saying like, I can be here, I can be happy here on my own without yeah. God. Yeah, separated. Separated, exactly, exactly. And to trust on yourself with a capital S, maybe that's what they're meaning then. Um, is for me to not trust on, on that little ego that thinks it can do everything here, but to trust on, okay, I'm just dreaming of being Neta, being this singer, but that's not who I truly am. Who I truly am is, I can't even describe that. That's just pure love, pure light. I'm still in the mind of God and never separated from God. And there is a part in me that, still knows that that still remembers that and you can call that the right-sided mind and you can call that the holy spirit it's whatever you feel comfortable with some people go oh, holy spirit what <laughs> um but there is a part of you that knows that it's actually home that knows that it's safe that knows that it could have actually never separated from its source and trust in that because if you let your life um if you yeah, if you trust on that and follow that voice that knows who you truly are, then everything just becomes an expression of that knowing. And then there's this prayer from A Course in Miracles says, I'm only here to be truly helpful. I'm here to... <laughs> I kind of lost it now. Um, I'm only here to be truly helpful. I do not have to worry about where to go or where to be. Um, for he who sends me will direct me. And the, on, the part to only be truly helpful actually means like to be truly helpful is to remember who you are, to remember that you are not separated and that you can never separate yourself. And when you remember that, you are truly helpful for somebody else because we're, we are one, there is only one of us. So if I remember that, like even now with us talking, if I have that in my mind, I unconsciously remember you remind you of that fact mm -hmm. and the same goes for you if you ask me questions from knowing that you are perfect love and that you're not separated you're going to have a totally different conversation with me than when you think like i'm guilty she's guilty and so yeah to just come back to to your question follow follow the voice follow the the, the spirit, the being, the, the part of your mind that knows that it's at home. Don't follow the voice that says that you are separated and that you need to do this and need to do that. and Self-improvement. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. you came from the voice of Holland to the voice of God. Yes. You, you could call it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is the meaning of my name as well, actually. Neda. Yeah, Neda means the Neda. voice of God. Yeah. 
or inner voice. Uh, Great. So that's cool. And <laughs> are you the only artist in, in Holland who, 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 who <coughs> sings about the Course in Miracles or, or have you discovered other uh, uh, performers? Um, definitely not in Rotterdam. There is one person in America, James Twyman, who is also doing, uh, he, he wrote like very short songs of every lesson, just like a repetition of the lesson. Um, there are a few Dutch artists also who have done it more like classical and also in Dutch. Hmm. Um, so the way that, that this album came through, I don't think it's, it's ever been done. Yeah. And I feel like it was there for a reason as well, because it's so easy to listen to. Um, but yet it contains all of these lyrics that is for a lot of people It's just a lot easier when they don't have the time to read the whole course book or when they don't When they feel they can't connect with it yet They can just listen to the album and get all of these lessons and actually feel it Because sometimes when you just only read it or when you hear somebody speak you can't actually feel it But when you hear music our heart opens up and you can let the music come in and that's when you can experience what the lessons are saying so I think that's the power of music and yeah it's just nice to have like this sort of like brainwash when you're hearing a song and you just have it stuck in your mind you actually have the lesson of the day stuck in your mind so I know that that's what I hear from a lot of course students that why they love listening to the album and what happens if you haven't heard of A Course in Miracles and you listen to uh, your uh, CD, The Light Has Come? It's okay, yeah, you can just still probably enjoy it. It's Yeah, the only thing that, that might be an obstacle is, like I said, the Christian terminology. That was an obstacle for me. Yeah. Like, The Course in Miracles is not a religion and it's not... Um, it just uses it just uses those words and, f and it took a, it took really it took a few years for me to really um, open up to those words and just erase my own negative associations with them because for me then God was just like oh like God like felt like this man that was like there with like a long beard <laughs> and like yeah. sitting on a cloud just judging us and you know why all of this he and like brother why is it not sister and mother and daughter and um but i feel like it's e everything that triggers us is a call for love everything that triggers us is a call for forgiveness is a forgiveness opportunity so even that even when you have problems with those words if they do something mm -hmm. with you that's actually just showing you something in your mind that wants to be seen and wants to be healed so then now I always say like, uh, especially when women have such, such problems with why everything is like in the male form, father, brother, son, holy son of God, um, say like we actually have a extra, um, how you say it? like it's, it's even better for us because men don't, wouldn't have that problem. So, <laughs> so we get like extra points for um, healing that part, you know, that yeah. feels excluded. Like again, the only, the course has the only problem that really is, is that we believe in the separation. And the only answer is that that could never happen. So everything just refers back again to, um, oh, I'm feeling excluded. That's because I actually believe that I left God and that God left me and that, that we're not together anymore that we're separate and now we're just running away from that bi big guilt trying to just build a life to sort of like get away from that and just project out that guilt into everything else so that we don't have to deal with it ourselves so it's projected out into tv in the world and the news what we see and, and our partners they're very good victims <laughs> we're projecting our guilt onto and yeah, once you're busy with the course and you're doing the lessons, it's like you realize that everything I see outside of myself is just a projection that comes from my mind. So whenever you're triggered, it's just a big invite to see what am I believing? Because I'm, this is me, I'm you, you know, you're me. This is, there's only one mind. So it becomes very interesting the moment you get triggered. And you see that it's not something outside of you that can ever trigger you. Because otherwise, everything should trigger everybody the same way. Mm. 
And that's not true because for some people, to come back to the Christian terminology, for some people that's they feel a lot, a lot of love when they read it, and yeah. for some people they don't. So it's not, it's never the thing outside of us that triggers us or, or that is the cause of us of our suffering. It's always just the trigger. It's always just the salt in the wound. But if there wouldn't be a wound, there wouldn't mm. be any pain. So you can just, what we're trying to do now is to get rid of all the salt. But why not go to the wound and heal the wound? And yeah. the salt doesn't have any effect on us anymore. So. What about those people who are protesting today in Paris <laughs> you know, with the with the, ye uh, the, have the yellow vest song? Yeah, maybe you heard something about it in the news. I actually did. There's, there's thousands and thousands of people in Paris protesting uh, against the government because they think there's too much tax on the gas price. Are those people also searching for home? Are they also what? Searching for home, searching for God. Is that just a manifestation yeah. of the same? They think the government is the problem. Yeah. The, the, the high oil price. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the course also said that either you're calling for love or you're extending your love. So if you're calling for love, that means that you're actually forget forgot that you are love because you can't call for love if you remember that you are love mm -hmm. and you really feel that and when you're extending love it's in a moment when you are really connected to yourself and you do remember like this is who i truly am and you just extend that it only becomes bigger and more um so er there's no exception for that how how bad it looks um it's always a call for love and yeah it's the same for them and they they might not see it like that and you also don't have to tell them like oh i see you're just Here's calling for love Here's the CD of <laughs> you want a hug you know <laughs> like it doesn't work like that it's of course unco unconsciously but and you don't have to uh, say that neither you don't have to say that out loud but if you see that and you just remember that then it's already different and if i react to that like let's say i get all mad and i would look at the news and th they're protesting or whatever it is and I would get so mad, like, oh, why are they doing that? Can they just, oh, there's such a, they, oh, they just have that call for love. And why do they keep calling? Like, it's clear that I'm triggered as well. Hmm. So it's important to first always deal with your own call for love. And if you're totally feeling peaceful and totally loved and you see somebody struggling, then you can maybe offer to help or to offer, I don't know, like even, even to just, not say anything but see somebody going through suffering but see them for who they truly are that's already being truly helpful then you're already helpful because on the level of the mind you're then not confirming that they are separate mm. bodies that yeah. are like having all of these problems but you're confirming them that they're actually totally complete and that they don't need anything and that now they are already do does it have effect on that person yeah. i think so yeah. i see that i see that in prison a lot that's what i really try to put to practice when i work in prison um because the, i feel like prison is such a beautiful symbol you know because it's it's an actual prison um, but i see it as a symbol for my mind you know that is still locked yeah <clears throat> and all of the boys in prison when they behave in such a way like my ego could say like oh i'm really not like them look at them going like this and acting acting out like that and then if i get really still i can actually see that all of the boys are just me they're just reflecting a part of my mind that is just playing out in front of me and it's and if i see it like that it's very um valuable because then i get to know my own mind and i get to know where i can still which parts of my mind still need some light but i always try to um to really in my mind just remember like they are not guilty they are innocent they're just they're e even the murderers yeah even the murderers i i didn't i had especially i thought i would have problems with more um sexual the offenders. sexual offenders yeah and it was a whole process for me to actually get to the point where i was working with them and even there i could really say in my mind like i love you i love you I love you. I would like literally look at them and just, just really feel that in my mind. And and it might sound weird for for some people. And I get it. I when I was younger, I was literally the one that that said, "Okay, I love everybody except people who do those kind of things. They can 
they can die you know I was really extreme about that and for me to now really see like there's really no difference that doesn't mean that that we shouldn't have any prisons or that oh you rape somebody you kill somebody oh you just need love let me give you a hug of course it doesn't work like that but on the level of the mind it there's really only either a call for love or an extension of love and to see that i feel when i work with these boys and i and i don't approach them as you are guilty and you need to be punished but suffer and suffer mm-hmm. here for what you've done but to see them as okay you're my brother you were confused <laughs> just like i i've been many times and still will be probably many times and you've been asking for love um in a very wrong way in a very yeah very twisted Dis- way yeah, disturbed confused way confusion is a good exactly word. Yeah. but when i approach them like that i see them open up and then we write songs and we really write some beautiful and deep songs that even the other teachers and uh, the guards they just start crying when they hear the songs and like oh my gosh i never knew that this this boy had that in him and that's yeah that's very touching and beautiful and you're never afraid yeah. because you're a you're a mo- you're a young good-looking woman you're a, amongst yeah boys who are in prison you could think that well it's not a very safe place to be for you or doesn't that feel like that no i never really i never really felt like that no there there is of course i'm also human so sometimes for me i can also forget that you know i have i have my own call for loves as well um so it's not it's not oh like there has been some not like confrontations or or uh, situations that i felt like oh this was this wasn't the nicest situations i ever been in um but i feel like it's all for me you know it's all it's all to learn and it's all to just it's all for healing it's all to heal your own mind and we're all in this together you know we don't heal we don't heal alone and there is only one mind so yeah it's when you really start seeing it like that then you know like there there's no you there's no me there's there's only one of us so if i'm now gonna try to hurt you that it's i'm only hurting myself so and yeah so it's constantly getting back to that to the forgiveness to remembering that we are still home and that there really didn't go anything wrong we didn't separate ourselves from god and in that way like we talked to in the in the in the dutch uh interview about the, the true forgiveness that the course in miracles uh, is talking about and that's not about forgiving somebody for what he did but forgiving somebody for what he did not do that's like a real radical approach to forgiveness but it uh, for me it's the yeah the most beautiful tool that i put to practice in daily life yeah. so you could say when you go to prison it's not about teaching them something you are taught also you you they're a teacher to you also it's yeah. it's one thing working both ways yeah Or how does that work you come out different a different Neda than you went into the prison or <laughs> what does it do with you um yeah for me again like i said it's always about trying to be truly helpful so while you're just you're still just normal like i'm still coming there i'm still just making maybe some talks with everybody and doing some games and mm-hmm. um then we write a song and we record the song like that's all the for me that's more the the practical yeah the, the practical approach to it and also just like a t- it's a tool to communicate with mm. them the music is and uh, to open up also have them more talk about their lives and really get to something to, for them to share something vulnerable a lot of those boys they always feel like oh just sh- shut shut down and just keep everything for yourself very close and then the music is inviting them to open up and it's very beautiful and Yeah, for for me it's like I said, for me it's just that symbol of of my own mind. So it just every time that I'm 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 with one of them, it's just 
it just I, I just get to know my own mind that's how I see it so mm. it's, it's just, just a whole big mind training to see like okay where where do I still uh, close myself off or where am I not trusting people where am I feeling that I'm afraid that people will stab me in the back or that I can't really open up because mm. they will turn against me or like all of those little things that they're just reminding me of that and yeah it's very I learn a lot <laughs> yeah I can imagine yeah and are you tired when you when you come home or are you inspired from such a trip well the <laughs> we have we talk about it a lot with the other uh, teachers as well because we have a big team um, it's for a young in prison it's the, it's the organization mm -hmm. that's the, that is organizing this and we have a lot of teachers and some are teaching basketball and others are teaching graffiti and uh, beatbox or not beatboxing what it's theater um, rap spoken words we have all kinds of things and every time we walk out of out of the prison everybody goes like <gasps> <sighs> like we just take a deep inhale because it, it does it, it does tend to be um, pretty intense like yeah. it's not something I could do every day so no. we only do that in the holidays and then it's like a week or two weeks max and then you do need a little time to reflect because it can be pretty intense just the whole energy inside of the prison walls for me I'm very sensitive so it does feel like oh, I need to go yeah. into nature so a lot of times after I've been to prison. I'll go take a walk in nature and just really, just uh, also let go of everything and and uh, and also the another practice what it was for me. Like in the past, I used to be really be the 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 one that always felt like I had to help others. Mm. They called the on heel healer in the Course in Miracles yeah. talks a lot about it. It's very it's a it's a funny subject when you recognize that with yourself that you always know best. Like I was always the one that always knew best for all my brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah. I could always um, heal them. I would always know like like the the, the books that they had to yeah. read, you know, the like medicine. you need to read this book. You know, you might recognize that. Oh you yeah. need to read this. Oh you just This is good for you. Go, this is good for you, exactly. Yeah. It called the unhealed healer, you know, when you're not fully there yet and yeah. you're just projecting your own shit basically on somebody else. So yeah, for me it's also interesting to see now that to have that sense of true empathy and true empathy means that you actually, like I said, really know that somebody doesn't need anything. Like, mm. you're already complete. You're not this sad little mess yeah. that I need to save. Fix. A fix or yeah. whatever. Yeah. You are my brother in Christ, and you're perfect as you are. And all that can go wrong is that you believed in a separation, and that you believe that you're guilty instead of innocent. And that's the only part where you can be truly helpful is to remind yourself and remind the other that that's not true and that, that don't ha that doesn't have to be um vocally again but um so yeah it's it's good for me also to to practice the true empathy and to see like because a lot of them also experience a lot of trauma in their lives of course and um to just remember that it's that it's that everybody has what they need to um to get where they need to be and they're already home that they're already home. Yeah. That's the indeed, like you like you said, that is that's the most important part. That you don't have to fix anybody. Everybody's already home. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great way of saying. Back to you as an artist, Neda the artist. <laughs> Neda the artist. I have two questions for, which <laughs> popped up in my mind. Are there any songs which didn't make it to the album, and w why didn't they make it to the album, and what were those songs about? I, I know from artists they mostly make like. 30 songs and then only 15 get to the album. How did that come about for you? No, that wasn't for this album. Um, like I told you in the other interview, this album came to be. We have it here. Um, because two, like, no, not two years ago. Like, in, in the meantime, like four years ago, I felt like as if somebody was just pulling me towards the piano. Um, the Course in Miracles book was lying open on one of the pages, uh, lesson 124, I think. Let me remember, I'm one with God. And I just started playing, writing, and the whole song just came through in like 30 minutes with lyrics all coming from that workbook lesson. Um, and that just repeated itself for two weeks. And then I think I had 14, 14 songs. Yeah. Well, now that we talk about it, there, were, there was a little scrapping. There were 14 songs, and then I thought, okay, I'll have an intro and an outro, so that will be 16 songs. 
Um, but then along the way, after I fully said yes to the album, so that was a few years after, there came one of my favorite songs um, called God is the Love in Which I Forgive. And that truly came after a point where I was just really busy with forgiveness, actually for the first time really understanding what true forgiveness means. And there were so many things going on in my life where I really needed to put this to practice. And then this song came through. So I really felt like this, this is part of the album. Um, and then there was the song Take Me Home. You might know that song that is not based on the Course in Miracles, that doesn't have any lyrics. This is the only song that is on the album without any chorus lyrics. And that song is, is really about my own journey. Um, you know, the first, the first um, verse says, um, you know, I'm so afraid of the unknown. I'm so afraid to be alone. I try to hear your guiding voice, but still I don't know where to go. I see your hand next to mine and I'm holding on so tight. Please, pr please promise me you'll never let go. Take me home today. I want to go home today. Take me home where I truly be belong. Take me home today. So this is like really about that, what we're just talking about, like just that moment where you just don't know that you're already home. Like, to, but wanting to be yeah, yeah, home. Yeah. That longing. That longing yeah. to get back to where you truly come from. And, um, yeah, I always joke to my friends, you know, I, uh, the, the album is called The Light Has Come, but I was always saying, like, I'm going to call it The Darkness Has Come, just because it, there was just so many darkness coming up in making this album. And I feel I just had to become aware of those parts in my mind that I was hiding for so long and when the light came it was like it finally um, there was finally an invite for all of this stuff to come up and it was pretty intense so I really felt like I wanted to put that song on the album as well um, no. other things that didn't make the cut were just like I had these little mini song mini um, interludes that I just added later and then I took off again because then it would be like 23 songs or something on the album so it was way too much so that's can, basically can you name an example of what kind of stuff that came up from your childhood from from uh, maybe f uh, previous lives parents uh, god mothers uh, what does come yeah. up? What What is the darkness for you? Yeah, well, for me, first of all, it was just the project itself that I didn't know anything. Like I didn't, like I said, I didn't know how to finance it. I didn't know what to do. Um, so that was, first of all, very scary for me to just fully surrender. And with that came all the insecurities of, oh, I'm not good enough. And mm -hmm. Um, my voice is not good enough. I'm not a good of artist enough. I'm not like everything is just like not good. I'm just not good. Not worthy. Not worthy. Not worthy. So that came up. And then at the time when I was making the album, there was just so many things going on in my life. Uh, my uncle just passed away. And then my aunt, who was like a mother for me, um, really didn't want to live anymore. So it was like really dealing with that. And eventually... Um, yeah, she just like really, f like she tried to kill herself like a, a more than seven times. Mm. And my mother is also into the chorus and she really, yeah, she's just such a brave, beautiful woman as well. And she really saw like, okay, my sister just wants to die and she's going to kill herself. So what's the most loving thing to do? Um, so eventually, like, we actually supported her with me, my mom, and my aunt, and my brother, and my dad. And we were, we were actually there with her when she did, like, a self-eutanasy thing. And I sang for her, and my mother played the violin for her. And it was, like, really intense building up to that. But it was also really beautiful in a, in a way to um, really let her go without any guilt like for her because she was like really peaceful before she left she was just like so grateful like that she could die without feeling the guilt and judgment from your and the side. judgment yeah. yeah so for Why her it was amazing yeah. um but for me eventually like it, there were more guilt coming up like why couldn't i save her again like yeah. that old like i should have done this or i should have done that or if i was good enough like she would you know i could maybe say the right things that will 
wake up her mind again. So I mean, like your ego can always take everything and just use it again for its own use. And I, I do really see that that was just like such a beautiful example. I also uh, dedicated my CD to her actually. Um, Cause it was like such a true opportunity to show what unconditional love truly is. Like that's really unconditional yeah. love to say like, whatever you do, even if you want to die, we still love you. Like you're still here. Um, then there was my relationship that was ending. So at that time there was, there was just like so many things. In the meantime, I was live on television yeah, with the, the boys. So all these people judging you and co like just being in the, wow. in the spotlight. So what a roller coaster. Yeah, there were many things. And every song of the album was just carrying me through all of that stuff to, yeah, to be able to sing them because before I could sing them in the studio, there was just so much of undoing I had to do before I could authentically record that song. That's so. a great sentence. Can you repeat that again? So much of undoing you had to do. Undoing I had to do. Can you explain it a little bit? <laughs> well, <laughs> when I wrote the songs, they just came through. Like I didn't even had anything. There was no interference. And then I recorded a demo. That was also fine. Um, but when I had to actually record them in the studio, that was like the real deal. Mm -hmm. um, I just couldn't just sing them like that. Um, they're... they're <laughs> I had to do a lot of undoing. <laughs> um, for example, uh, I also described this in my mini documentary, uh, the song, what I just spoke about, um, God is the love in which I forgive myself. When I was singing that for the first time in the studio, I just couldn't, like, I, I just, the chorus, I couldn't even sing it. Like, my whole voice just got stuck and... It was because I couldn't authentically say that chorus yet. God is the love in which I forgive myself. There were so many things that I didn't forgive myself for mm. yet that it was just not authentic. Not true for you. It was not true. Mm. Yeah. So and it's that's it was like that with a lot of songs that it's not just music, you know, it's it's teaching it's teaching something. It's it's really communicating a message and if I, it would be an unhealed healer situation if I would sing those songs while I wasn't even really feeling it. So I feel like Spirit, Jesus, Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it, for me, Jesus is like now, it's like my buddy, it's like my, my coach, my mentor. It's like just telling me what to do. And he, I feel like he was really guiding me to be on a level where I could authentically share these songs and authentically record them in such a way that I would really feel that. And in that way, other people that would listen to it could really feel it. Mm. And that was very important. And yeah. how long did it take that undoing? Did you have to wait for a half a year or did you have to <laughs> write things or talk to people or talk to yourself or read the course uh. again? Yeah, it's different. I think it was just a lot of meditation. Mm. I would just meditate before um, every studio session. I had like two studio sessions a week. Mm -hmm. So I would record about two songs a week when the vocal recording was there. Before that, it, cause it's been a whole process. Because first I was recording the demos. Then I went to the producer. And we, we, we sit like for a few months to produce everything. And then we was we had to record all the, um, the, the, the instruments live. So we even went to Istanbul to record the percussion over there because we really wanted a percussionist that lived over there. So that took already a few months to have like, the drums and the, the guitars and, the, and the everything just um, recorded. And then when it was time for the singing part, that took also like maybe two or three months in total because I was recording about two songs a week and then the backing vocals and everything um so in my meditation before i would go to the studio i would just really ask in meditation like what song do you want me to sing for today and, um and then before that i had a whole process already where i was like just really looking at every song writing them out really um really ch checking like do i really understand what this means um sometimes i even asked David Hofmeister, like, I actually don't understand what, like, my own song, like, yeah. I actually don't understand what this means. Can and he explained it to you. Yeah, and he would explain it to me. 
uh, or we talk about it a little bit or so there was like a process before I went in the studio that I really wanted to go through every song and really see like do you understand this that's when I also came um, to that song I am not a body I yeah. think we talked about that uh, another yeah. time yeah where I felt like oh how can I <laughs> how can I sing this you yeah. know where it says like the love of God proclaimed me as his son you know um, and so that was all before I went in the studio that I that I see this like oh my gosh I can't I can't sing that I need to change it and then to finally come to that understanding like the song is about I'm not a body the song is about you know really non-dualistic like we're not bodies we're spirit and we're perfect love that is not a man or a female or anything in between is it just is um, and then for me to actually change that is actually confirming no I actually am a body because if if I would change it then it means that I be, that I believe that it needs to that, that, yeah. yeah there there's there is a category that I do belong to and there's a category where I don't belong to so what did you sing so I eventually I sang it exactly as it came through yeah. so uh, the love of God proclaimed me as his son and I, I had a blast doing that too like I was really feeling like very mischievous and it was just all so funny because then in the, in the end it, it doesn't mean anything anymore mm, it's just, just words. yeah it's just words and yeah. it, it could just as well be the love of god proclaim me as his daughter or as his dog or whatever it is <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah to change it then then it does have meaning if i would change it i would say like it has meaning but for me not to change it is actually teaching also that lesson for myself and for listeners. Like it really doesn't matter. I can sing this as a seeming woman um, and I can sing God is a love in which, uh, which uh, proclaimed me, pr the love of God proclaimed me as his son. And it's still only saying that I am one with God yeah, and I'm still with God and nothing less or more than that. Yeah. Yeah. You also do some stuff for uh, Miracles in Contact, eh? a Dutch miracle group who, who, um, who give meetings and mm -hmm. so on for young people. Huh? Uh, what kind of, because when I mostly see meetings about a course, I see people with gray hair just as myself and we have glasses just as myself and we walk a little bit stiff. <laughs> are, are, are there people in the age of 18, 20 who are who are feeling this, who are hearing this. Do you talk to those people? Um, I don't know a lot of people that are 18 or 20, but I oh. mean, I was I was 20 when the course came into yeah. my life, so I was pretty young as well. And, and there are, uh, especially in David Hofmeister's, he has a community in America and mm -hmm. in Mexico, and he's actually making another community now in, um, um, what's it called again, in Spain, uh, I forgot the name, but somewhere, somewhere in Spain. Um, and there are actually a lot of young people attracted to the community. So a lot yeah. of people of my age and even a few years younger. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. And I think more and more people are now, more young people are now getting, getting to um, spiritual stuff and non-duality stuff at a younger age. And yeah, I don't know exactly why, why that is. Maybe because it's now just more available. The internet. The yeah. internet. Podcasting. It's YouTube and you can just yeah. find everything. And and also, I think that we're living at such a time where where there's such a contrast. There's also so many distraction of, of, of like the whole ego world. And then I feel like the more of that there is, then the other side is also going to ask more like, I really want to go home, hmm. you know. So eventually... I mean, eventually we'll, we're all already home, so a happy outcome is, of course, guaranteed. Guaranteed. <laughs> um, but one way or another, like we're all going home, so it's like whatever path you're on, like it also leads to the mm. same destination. It's just more like how long, how long do you want to take? Like, do you still want to have like thousands more more lives where you're just struggling, or do you say like, okay, let me just use this life? as productive as I can and use just every opportunity that I get for healing and for, for forgiveness. Let me just seize that opportunity and yeah. yeah. Can I ask you something about fear? There, there are still some things in my life that, that make me afraid. Okay, I can, I can um, uh, paraphrase the course which says that's a great opportunity to forgive. 
but how 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 does that work then you know i'm sitting at home being afraid that uh, my car is stolen <laughs> hmm. what what okay let's take that example what to do well i i always like the indeed the the forgiveness process and that's first of all to just acknowledge that you're feeling fear hmm. like that's that's okay and you're allowed to feel that and um what i used to do is like really spiritualize it like oh no it's all an illusion and fear is not real and you yeah. don't feel it and that's more people like that's a that's a pitfall for a lot of people to just all um like to not feel anymore yeah, wave just, it away wave it away yeah, yeah. it's very important to just also feel it and uh because the fear is real at that time it does it does yeah. feel we real, real. Yeah. and i like uh, d again david hoffmeister always says you gotta feel it to heal it ah. you know <laughs> so i like that one um but but when you feel anything less than joy you like there has to be a mistake like there has to be like i said again you can only be extending love or it's a call for love and when you're calling for love you forgot that you are love and a call for love always feels less than joyous like it's always you never call for love where you're totally feeling loved and happy and everything so so you can also measure it by your feelings are you feeling pure pure joy okay good you don't really need to do anything but if you feel anything less than pure joy there's like this little ding dong bell that is just reminding you like hey there is another way of looking at this so then there comes the question like, okay, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Because when we're so mad and especially a lot of times we feel like somebody else is to blame. So when there's somebody else to blame, it's like, no, I'm actually, I have a reason right now for being afraid or I have a reason right now for being yeah, angry I'm because right. you yeah. make me angry. Yeah. I am right yeah. and you are wrong yeah. and you are the cause of my suffering. Yeah. So perfect fine okay you know a lot of times i feel like yes i want to be happy but i actually a little bit more want to be right it's all fine but it's just not gonna make you happy mm -hmm. so when you authentically do feel like okay i am willing or maybe even i'm willing to be willing that's fine too okay. like i'm willing to be willing to be wrong about this to be wrong about what i'm feeling right now then there's this opening in your mind that is open for a different interpretation and in that opening you have the chance to step back again and to let that part of your mind that actually does know that it's truly home like I said the right mind, mind inside of your mind that does know that it's still uh, with God and that never separated and that can never separate then you invite that part of your mind in to take over the, the steering wheel so practically it's realize that you're upset um take back your projections so see that okay what i'm seeing right now right what i'm experiencing right now is a projection of my own mind so i am responsible for what i'm seeing and perceiving and feeling like nothing outside of me is causing me any upset without guilt like because that that can also again be an ego thing of like saying like oh yeah i know because i'm so bad and i'm such a loser and i'm so guilty and of course it's my fault and it's not like blaming yourself neither because again yourself what self are you then blaming that's always the little self that's mm. always the personality self and that's just as much a projection from my mind as you are like I'm also this is also a projection that I'm projecting so again yeah you just got to be very vigilant of the ego <laughs> with those type of things because it will join you on every exercise that we yeah. that the Holy Spirit is making up um, so once you take back the projection and you take the responsibility of okay I'm seeing this because I actually want to see this why do I want to see this? Because I want to get rid of my guilt that I have in my mind. And if I see it out there, then it's not in here anymore. Um, but once you see that, then it becomes like, oh, okay, I perceive you as being wrong. Okay, I'm projecting, uh, I'm projecting my own guilt on you. Okay, and then comes the next step to just really surrender all of that to the Holy Spirit or Spirit or 
whatever symbol feels great for you it can be a tree or whatever symbol that really stands for you as love like it has to be something that stands for that part of your mind that actually knows who you are so not your little self but something else like that um, and then you just surrender all of that fear onto him her it and you just ask for it to be replaced with the truth that's um that's how I do it and what can help also um, I like this analogy that Ken Wapnick always uses Ken Wapnick was one of the first people you probably know him um, that was editing the course all the way in the beginning <laughs> and he says like it's as if you're sitting in the movies and you're watching your life on the screen and on one side you have the ego sitting next to you and on the other side you have Jesus or Holy Spirit or whatever sitting next to you and you're just watching your life go by on the screen while you just relax you are nothing wrong you're just sitting there with your popcorn <laughs> and whenever you feel upset it's because you're identifying with what you're seeing on the screen and you're on this side you know the whole the the ego is talking mm -hmm. to you in this ear and you're listening to the ego and the ego's interpretation of what you're seeing is making you feel a certain way but when you see that, again, you come out of the ident being identified with, oh, I am Neta and this is happening to me and that is my car that is being stolen or mm -hmm. that's going to be stolen. You just, as the Course says, become above the battleground, like you're not in it anymore, mm -hmm. but you're just yeah, like coming out of it. And then you can turn away from it and, and, and listen to a different interpretation and you can listen to the Holy Spirit's interpretation and see it from the point of view that knows I am still home and I am loved and I'm not innocent and then you can just see it so innocent like oh I'm afraid that my star my car is going to get stolen and and what does that actually really means you know you can get under those layers of well you know if my star if my car gets stolen that means that I am not worthy and you someone know, is cheating on me yeah exactly yeah. like you can get to all those things and nowadays like it's almost 2019 we have so many practical applications to do this so many tools so i also love the um the spirit app i don't know if you heard about no. it but maybe a lot of iphone listeners or not if you don't have an iphone you can check it on um facebook messenger is this uh app that um david hoffmeister created um, that actually guides you through these steps, the levels of the mind, and oh. it really guides you through like what's underneath it. Like I said, um, you can just remove the salt, but uh, you know, when somebody else comes along and throws salt new in your salt, wound again, yeah. there's always going to be new salt, you know? So um, to get to the core of the belief, to get to the really deep wounds, um, he has a really cool app for that, and it shows also a lot of videos that are related to every subject. So it's called Spiri, so S-P-I-R-I, -I, and it's also on an app, but it's also in um, Facebook. Uh, Facebook Messenger, like one of those bots, and you oh. can just type and like type in your problems, and then it just Great. guides you through those levels of A Course in Miracles. It's pretty cool. So Yeah, and where yeah. can your music be found? Um, so you can go to my website, that's nedaboyn.com, so N-E-D-A-B-O-I-N.com, or Spotify, Deezer, Tidal, iTunes, anything, any streaming website, wherever. Um, but if you want to get like the physical product, which is just very beautiful. Um, oh, with beautiful paintings? Beautiful paintings by um, Willem Glaudemans. He actually um, translated the course in Dutch he was one of the head translators so he was he's also a great painter which I didn't know but like I said it all just all the collaborations everybody came together so so this is very beautiful so this uh, you can only get at my website so netaboy.com and anything else you can get everywhere and any performances come performances coming up on uh, maybe you talked about the places in America you're gonna visit yeah. in 2019 yeah, that's in uh, March in New York. I have a few um, performances and Where? concerts. Um, one is in the, in the Bronx in a theater. I, I don't recall exactly which theater. But then I have another concert and a workshop um, also in New York um, at the center of 
Remembering and Sharing, I think it's called. Uh -huh. It's by the um, Japanese translator of the course, actually. Uh -huh. She has her own course in Merco Center there. Great. So together with her and Corinne Zupko is also a course teacher who just uh, wrote a beautiful book called From Anxiety to Love. It's very beautiful how to deal with anxiety and use the principles of A Course in Miracles to deal with your anxiety. It's very beautiful. So we're going to come together and create a beautiful workshop day. Um, and then in May, there's the Course in Miracles conference again um, in Boston. So I'm going to perform there. And who knows? I'm just following wherever spirit leads me so I'm just open for whatever invitations and yeah yeah great see. there's the mini documentary the light has come also for free on YouTube yes and we did a, a an interview in Dutch for Dutch people who are listening or view, watching this um, where you talk about this uh, as um, inspiration inspired as you did today yeah so thanks again thank you and um, we're gonna keep on following you. Netherboy. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> okay.